All right, guys, so we're going to continue our work with uh, normal distributions. After this lesson, you should be able to complete all of 15.1 before moving on to 15.2. All right, so here are our learning targets for this lesson. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to recognize and interpret properties of normal distributions and you should be able to describe the effects of changing the mean or standard deviation on a normal distribution. If you don't know what these two vocab terms are, they are covered in this lesson. Okay, so don't worry about it too much. You'll learn more about what those exactly are in this lesson. All right, guys, so let's first define what normal distributions are exactly. Okay, so a normal curve Okay, which we'll talk about a lot in this unit. Um, get that. Okay, so a normal curve is a bell-shaped curve that is symmetric about the mean or the average of the data. And by bell-shaped, what we're going to talk about is it's going to be shaped kind of like this. Okay, and so the mean will be right here in the middle of the data to split it perfectly in half. Okay, so all normal distributions that we're talking about are going to be modeled using a normal curve. Okay, and so for future reference, usually we get normal distributions when we have big sample sizes. So by that I mean if we have out of an entire population, if we have a sample of about 10,000, okay, we know that the distribution will be very close to being normal. Okay, and by normal again, it has this shape. All right, so here are some examples and some non-examples. You'll notice that these on the left are all normal distributions. They each have one peak, okay, one peak. Now, the means of all these would be directly right in the middle so that they cut the data perfectly in half. Okay, so remember again that they're symmetric around the mean. Okay, these are what we consider to be called bell shaped. Okay, bell shaped. Notice on the non-examples, for example, the first one, it has two maxes. Okay, we can only ever have one. Okay, so if it has two, it is not a normal distribution. Okay, notice that these ones are okay because they both have just one but if you imagine if this were where I'm splitting my data, they're not symmetric. This one has way more data on the left, and this one has way more data on the right. Okay, so these are considered not normal distributions because they're not symmetric. Okay, we kind of talked about that in the last lesson about being skewed left or skewed right. All right, so let's get our definitions of mean and standard deviation. Like you probably already know, the mean is the average of the data. Okay, so adding up all your data, dividing by how many you have, okay, that is the mean. When we're talking about the mean of a population, we represent that with this symbol, and it's called mu. Okay, it's a Greek symbol, um, just like when you see theta or alpha or beta, those are all from the same Greek alphabet. The mean of the sample, okay, so remember that the sample is taken out of the population, so this sample is from this population. It is represented with what we call X bar, okay, X bar. Okay, so moving on to standard deviation, okay, the key word being deviate, okay, so we, what we're actually measuring is how spread out the data is from the mean, or in other words, how much the data deviates from the mean. Okay, that's where the word deviation comes from. Okay, so when you have a high deviation or standard deviation, the data is very scattered out. So if you imagine high standard deviations means that's a, that the space covered by the data is very large. So it spans a lot of different values. 
whereas low standard deviation means that the data is very clustered around the mean. So that means all the data is really, really close to the mean. Okay, so there's not a whole lot of deviation. Um, the standard deviation of the population is represented with this Greek letter, and it's called sigma. Okay, and then the standard deviation of the sample is represented with S. Okay, so again, the difference between population and sample, population being everybody, sample being those that were chosen for the particular survey or that sort of thing. All right, so let's do an example. Okay, so we're going to be looking at which of the following have the lowest standard deviation. And remember that low standard deviation means that the data is really close together. Okay, close data. So everything is really close to the middle of our graph. Okay, so if you imagine if this these are all normal distributions from the last sl couple slides. Okay, the means are all right in the middle. Okay, now take your best guess at which you think is group the closest to the mean or has the lowest standard deviation. Okay, is it number one, number two, or number three? All right, if you said number one, okay, number one would be the correct answer. Okay, this one, okay, all the data, if you notice, the means right here, a lot of the data is very close to the mean, and that's why the height is so tall. Okay, so if you imagine pushing all the data in this way, the only place this thing has to go is up. Okay, whereas this, the data is really spread out, which keeps the height, which keeps the height really, really low. Okay, and then likewise with number three, okay, this height is also not as tall as this one. Okay, the data is more spread out. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to take your best guess which of these two, two or three, has the lowest standard deviation. So just out of two and three, take your best guess. All right, if you answered three, if I can actually get it, there we go. Okay, you would be correct. Notice that the height for this one is much taller than this one. So that means the data is closer to the mean than it is in number two. Okay, so this one would have the highest standard deviation. Okay, so if you're going to rank these one through three from low to high, you would say number one, number three, and number two. Okay, and this again is low standard deviation to high standard deviation. All right, let's take a look at an actual set of data um, and how we're going to interpret these normal distributions. So, for example, okay, we have test scores from Hoover High School and test scores from Washington High School. Okay, what they'll ask you to do is find the mean score from each. Well, if you remember, if these are normally distributed, the mean should cut my data perfectly in half. So for Hoover High School, the average or the mean should be 85. Okay, so Hoover is 85. And then for Washington, okay, for Washington, the average should be an 83. Okay, so again, those two data points cut our data perfectly in half. Okay. Now, 
how does the standard deviation for Hoover compare to the standard deviation of Washington? Okay, so again, remember that all the all this area in here represents the data in my data sets. Okay, so what this is asking is which one of these has the higher or lower standard deviation? Okay, so let's say, for example, which one has the lower standard deviation? Okay, and so if I'm doing low standard deviation like I did on the last slide, that means the data is close together. So it's very close to the mean. So take your guess at which one has the lower standard deviation. All right, if you said Hoover, okay, you would be correct because if you notice, okay, look at this data. Between 83 and 87 is almost all of my data in here. Okay, so that's really, really close to my mean of 85. Whereas in Washington, okay, if you go out to these, that's already four away in both directions, whereas this is only two away in both directions. Okay, and there's a lot of data left outside here. Okay, so this one is much more spread out, and thus it has a higher standard deviation. Okay, so the lower one would definitely be Hoover High School. All right, now we're going to look at what would happen if we change the mean or the standard deviation for our test scores and what effects that will have on our graph of our bell shapes here. So, let's say we changed the average of the Hoover test scores and it went up by 2%. Well, right now, the average is 85. So if it increased by 87, that means that the new average, if it increases by 2, it's going to go up to 87. Okay, so if you remember, we talked about the mean always splits our data in half. So what's going to happen is now this bell curve is going to actually move to the right. So whereas normally the mean was at 85, my new mean is at 87, so my curve has to adjust accordingly. Okay, one thing to notice is that I'm not changing the height or the spread of my data at all. Literally, I'm just shifting this thing to the left or to the right. Okay, cuz I'm increasing my mean. Now you can imagine, if Washington's went down 4%, well the current one is 83, okay, so if I go down 4%, that takes me to a 79. This 79 needs to be the new center of my data. Okay, so I'm going to take this, and it's going to be out like that, and out like that. Okay, something like that. Again. It should be the same height as this one. Okay, it should literally just shift my graph to the left. Okay, so one thing you can write down or remember is that changing the mean okay, shifts left and right. Okay, so shifts left and right. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about standard deviation. Um, let me erase all this so that I have room to draw stuff. Okay, so... Let's see, I think I got most of it. Almost done. 
There we go. Okay, so let's look at these two problems. We're going to talk about changing the standard deviation for Hoover and Washington. All right, so if you remember, Hoover had a pretty low standard deviation because all the data is really close to the mean. Okay, so what would happen if we increased Hoover's standard deviation? Okay, so by increasing it, remember that increasing standard deviation is going to spread out my data. Okay, so instead of all this area being really close together in here, okay, what's going to happen is that it's going to spread out. So this area in here is going to now spread out towards the tails. And so how that's going to look is, notice that I didn't change my mean at all. I didn't say anything about that. But what it does do is by spreading out the data, Okay, so it should look something a little bit like that. Okay, what happens is that the maximum shifts down. All right, and the way you can think about this is that if we're taking this blue area, okay, and we're trying to spread it out, well, this blue area is going to spill out over here, okay, and spill out over here. And so all this data is then going to drop my maximum to a lower maximum. Okay, so it's going to be like that. And so this area is now going to be my new distribution if I increase the spread of the data or increase the standard deviation. Likewise, if I decrease the standard deviation of Washington, meaning that the data is going to get moved closer together okay, and close to the mean okay, the mean still gonna be 83 but now all this data out here all this data out here is gonna be pushed to the middle and so if you imagine what that's gonna do it's gonna make the middle of my data go really steep Okay, and so all that's going to get forced up, and so if you imagine the max here and then the max here, okay, it got shifted up. Okay, so this is kind of counterintuitive. When the standard deviation increases, okay, the maximum actually goes down. Okay, so that's kind of a different idea. If, it in, if the standard deviation increases, the top goes down. And then likewise, when it decreases, the maximum actually goes up. Okay? That is typically one of the most difficult things for students to grasp, is that difference in decreasing the standard deviation, which increases the maximum. All right, let's revisit our learning targets because um, we've hit them all already. Uh, how confident are you that you can do the following? You should be able to recognize and interpret properties of normal distribution. So this is specifically talking about the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, so if you look at a normal curve, you should be able to identify what the mean is and you should be able to identify if the standard deviation is high or if the standard deviation is low. Uh, the next thing we did with the last example is describe effects of changing the mean and the standard deviation. So if you remember when you change the mean that shifts left and right okay, and then the standard deviation shifts the max up and down. Okay, Alright, so now you should be able to complete 15.1, okay, section 15.1, all of it, and then once you're done with that, you can come grab assignment 15.1 from me before starting on 15.2. Okay, so make sure these two things are completed before you go on to 15.2, which talks about the empirical rule. Okay, so there's a rule that goes along with normal distributions that we're going to learn about in 15.2. As always, if 
you have any questions about this lesson or specifically how I got anything, definitely, definitely ask questions. Thanks.